What I love about you is that you're the real deal. Mm -hmm. um, you don't say anything unless you really feel strongly the Holy Spirit has really impressed it upon you. You're not um, loose with your prophetic unctions. You know the Bible so well, and God speaks to you very clearly, and he has in this season. You have gotten some really powerful prophetic words that I felt would be very encouraging to the body of Christ, and one of them is the spoils of war. Unpack that for us. Yeah, Katie, um, it was a word that bubbled up in me actually when I was at an event sitting under the teaching of an amazing man of God, and yet God was so clear on wanting us to be aware of this. While I'm trying to pay attention to this wonderful speaker, God is speaking to me, and he said, clear as a bell, It was, and I mean that, it was like a bell ringing in my spirit, wow. there will be spoils of war in 2024. Very simple word, but as I spent time with God, Katie, he really began to unpack different facets and and uh, of the word. And the first is, and you talked about it at the top of the show, and you're so spot on, he wants us to know there's going to be more warfare in 2024. Mm -hmm. But yeah. what's important about that is we've got to get our heads around. This is a God-ordained, God-arranged season of warfare. And the reason that's so important is we tend to hear there's going to be warfare and we'll think, oh no, that means the enemy's going to be coming against me. The enemy's going to be attacking me. And there's this hint or even, even, even flood of a victim mentality of, oh, warfare, I'm going to, I'm going to get hits from the enemy. And we've got to understand that what seasons of warfare that God has arranged and ordained are never about what the enemy's doing. It's always about the opportunity to wow. partner with God to take territory. Oh, gosh. That's what God arranged, <laughs> God ordained seasons of warfare are. When God gives us Kairos moments, Kairos hours, Kairos seasons to partner with him to take territory. And for everybody out there who's thinking, I didn't want more more warfare, I humbly submit to you, yes, you did. Because what you've been praying and crying out for is we want revival in our churches, reformation in our nations. I want to see God move amongst my prodigals. I want to see a healing in my body. I want to see a restoration in my marriage. I want to see my finances really come into order. What are we doing there? We're crying out, God, partner with me and let me partner with you to take back from the enemy what's been stolen. So we're coming into this season of warfare, Katie, but it's nothing to hang our heads over. It's absolutely something to get excited about because God <laughs> is putting his hand on his people who are willing to go to war in 2024, and we will take territory. And even more than that, we'll see spoils. Okay. I'm super excited. I've not heard a single prophet talk about this from this angle. I think they've all fallen short of missing this part of it. It feels like, from what you're saying, that because God is saying that it is 2024, spoils of war, that, like you said, he's ordained the war, which means that he's ordained already that we're going to win. And yeah. that there's extra authority and angels and power and presence and dominion to actually engage in warfare and have it be so much easier than it's ever been. Um, because it's been ordained by God. Is that, is that where you're going? Because, man, that's so encouraging. Absolutely. You know, I go way back to, I think it was 2015, and I was part of an event at Angelus Temple, and I believe you were there as well as one of the speakers, Katie, and it was a huge event we were doing at Angelus Temple, Amy Semple McPherson's church, and during worship, I was up on the front row, and I had one of the most profound angelic visitations I've ever had. An angel came and put a war coat on me, and, and I won't go through all of it for time's sake, but the point of this encounter was in the midst of it, when it, I asked the Lord, what is happening? And he said to me, what I did through my people who were willing to take up the sword of steel in the Old Testament, I will do through my New Testament people who are willing to take up the sword of the Spirit in their mouths. And he was oh saying, gosh. even, what is this, nine years ago, how he was getting us ready to move in power and authority to take territory. Because that's what, when we read our Bibles, that's what the God-ordained, God-arranged, God-initiated seasons of warfare are about. They're about kicking the enemy out of the land, going in, possessing, 
occupying, inhabiting, and expanding. And this is a season where God will lead us. I'll tell you one of the best scriptures to be declaring over yourself, everybody, in this season, 2 Corinthians 2.14. Start praising God that he is leading you in triumph in Christ Jesus. Notice it doesn't say, I'll give you triumph. He says, I'm leading you into the wow. manifestation of the triumph. That's what 2024 is. And it's way more than recompense and payback. It's a season of spoils. Okay, I feel the oil and the presence of the anointing on this, guys. For real. So for one, I was at that meeting at Amy Semple, uh, McPherson's Temple, with you and Patricia King and a bunch of other people. Yeah. And uh, just interestingly enough to know how spot on you are in your prophetic timing, my friend, is that in March, I'm going back there for an event for the first time since you and I and everybody else was there back then. That cannot be coincidence. I really feel like that's a prophetic landing. Like, okay, you're going back to the place where the war coat and the decree was first made, and I'm going to manifest it. I feel so much presence on that, which is amazing. And how you said that the sword of the war of war is being released through our mouths. This is the decade of the mouth, guys. It's the pay decade. And so it is the, the mouth. And I'm telling you, um, Robert, like, I've been preaching the same thing. we got to use our mouth to thanks. I mean, I will sometimes go into a meeting in the last three months. I've gone into meetings and just given thanks. I, I've led everybody to just say, thank you, God. We praise you, God. We worship you, God, for like 20, 30 minutes. And that alone is like engaging warfare to win. Yeah, you know, it's interesting that you know me, Katie. Like you said, we've known each other for about 18 years, and you're very similar. You're one of those allies in the battle. And um, you know me, I am so willing to go to war. I am so confident in the victory we have in Christ. I know we were from victory, not for victory. I am willing to get in there and mix it up. I want to go to war. I get intense in it. I love it. What's interesting though, in as soon as we hit January of 2024, as much as I love to go to war, when I'd get in my prayer chair all ready to go to war in the mornings, it was the authority was there, the decrees were there, the faith was there, the zeal was there. But what was interesting is I couldn't get into the uh, intense warfare. I would get into joy. I wow. would get into just what you said, Thanksgiving. Wow. And the entire month of January to start this year off, all I could do was praise God, thank God, rejoice in God that we had the victory. Wow. And I've got some serious, serious battles. Please, everybody watching, I am not in any way making light of the warfare that you're in or going through. I am in some major battles myself for loved ones, for family mm. members, for assignments in our ministry. Wow. But what I want you to know is there's something different about the warfare in this season. One is how we're going to war. One, one big thing is we're going to lay down this victim mentality of, oh, the enemy is coming against me. No, you're coming against the enemy Come and he's on. terrified and he's trying to get hits in. And yes, we need to be aware of the hits he gets in so that we can rebuke them and deal with them. But I, I declare over every single person right now, <sighs> you, any residue of victim mentality is broken off of you. Ooh, and I declare that you are a victor in Christ and I release the faith Thank of you. Samuel and the faith of Joshua. And uh, sorry, Joshua and Caleb. I release the faith yeah. Of Joshua and Caleb to you, that where you see the promise, you will be so focused on the promise and the bigness of your God that this grasshopper mentality will fall away, and you will know that every enemy is defeated, and you can partner with God in your marriage, in your finances, in your family, in your body, in your health, in your calling, in your business, in the nations that you're passionate for. You can partner with God at an all new level in 2024. Of faith, zeal, and expectation <laughs> to see the manifestation of the triumph and collect the spoils. I declare Whoa. you are a victor in Christ and you will see victories that you've been believing for, not just for weeks or months or years, but even for decades in Jesus' well, name. Oh, come on. And when you said Caleb, it reminded me that, you know, a lot of people are so burnt out, Robert, by the battle that even physically they're burnt out. But we got to remember that Caleb, 
He, he, he was 85 when he came to Joshua and said, give me my inheritance, which happened to be in the land of the giants, by the way. And he said, because I'm as strong going into battle as coming out of battle. And the key I felt like in, in his story was that he's from the tribe of Judah, which means praise. So thanksgiving and praise, if we just walked around thanking God all day, the warfare would decrease as far as its negative impact on us, probably about 80 or more percent. What say you? I agree with you. And, you know, our dear friend and and spiritual mother that we both have, the one, the only, the amazing Patricia King, has taught us all something. Whatever you focus on, you empower. That's one of the reasons we've got to break this victim mentality of the enemy is coming against me, the enemy's attacking me. Look, the attacks are real, but so is the victory of Jesus Christ. So if we'll focus on the victory, if we'll focus on the bigness of our God, if we'll focus on the certainty of his promises— All of a sudden then, everything you're saying, Katie, is what will happen, is we start to remember who God is and what he's like, and even more, because we're made in his image and after his likeness, we start to remember who we are and what we have. And this is a key for 2024, to remember who God is, to remember what he's like, and remember who we are in him, with him, and for him. And there is this awesome orneriness of joy it's a joyful orneriness <laughs> that is rising up in the body of Christ. The devil, you're going to be sorry you ever tried. Devil, are you nuts? You are coming against the anointed of God. We are going to be more and more like David, running at the enemy, declaring that he is insane for coming against not just God, but us with God. Because, mm. you know, to your point, Katie, when David shows up for the battle, for the impossible victory and the spoils, All of Israel's army, and it's Israel's army's job to be defending and fighting for Israel, they're all cowering on the sidelines. Why? Because they're freaked out by the size of the giant. Mm. David's not. David shows up declaring the size of his God. We all know this, but it's going to be a key in this season. So praise, worship, reading the word, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And your faith in God's ability to bring you in to triumph, victory, and spoils in this season because you're in the promise. I, I Like you know, Katie, the book of Joshua is one of my favorite books of the Old Testament. Yeah. And one of the things God highlighted to me years ago when I was in the midst of a 12-year battle for my life and health, he highlighted to me that, they, that Joshua had like two major battles on the way into the promised land. Once he gets into the promised land, once he get, when he crosses over and he's in the promise, he has like 10 times the number of battles. But God is with them in all of them. God has ordained all of them. And every single one of them was to kick the enemy out of the territory Joshua knew was his. That's part of why we're in a season of warfare. We're inside the promises. We're going to kick the enemy and his lies and his treachery and his tyranny, his schemes and his scams. We're going to kick all that out through these battles, and we are going to see the spoils. Okay, did you hear that? It's like we already have crossed over the Jordan. We're already in the promised land. So that means we're in a season of warfare where it's just going to happen systematically with general-like precision that you're a general over the battle and the precision and, and there will be one victory after the other. You know, there's a big difference between how the people handled the warfare in the desert. They complained, they grumbled, they moaned, they groaned. Where's the leaks of Egypt? Oh, they came. You know, why Moses and God did you bring us out of, you know, Egypt into this desert? And they got attacked by fiery snakes because they let their mouth grumble about it. It's like, this is different. Joshua, them, you don't see them doing that in that battle. And, you know, uh, Robert, I got to say this, and I hope you don't mind me. I'm not going to share everything, but I was there for your health battle for 12 years. We fought, we all fought together for that. And never have I seen anyone in my life, anyone in my life that handled that onslaught against your physical body like you did. You were, of course, you, 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 you had to come against the thoughts, but you stayed in that position of, I don't care how I feel. I believe in God. I don't care what's going on. I know God loves me. I don't care how long this has taken. I know that I'm going to win it. And you kept up. You were tenacious. You were filled with, with, with faith. Even though, even when your hope was dashed, you rallied back. I've never seen anybody fight as well as you fought that battle. So everybody needs to listen today because you're listening from a person who has walked through it. 